Oh. Today we're gonna review the Swan M500s, and I am precisely as close as I want to be to them. This is fine. This is this is fine. This is 30 feet. Um, Swan, Swan M300 Mark II. Here, here they are. Here's the Swan M300 Mark IIs. Best speaker you can fucking buy under a thousand. Maybe best speaker you could buy under four thousand. Like they compare with the Bucart. A500s. That is heavy duty competition. So in your mind, in your calculatable brain, you say, oh, the bigger one, the one with the eight inch driver instead of the six and a half. Well, shit, that's gotta be, that's gotta be better. And here's the thing. Um, I just looked at the price before the review because I had to open the web page and, um, these are only $1,169, which those were $900. They, I don't know if they've dropped either, but that's a very small margin of difference to go from a six and a half inch to an eight inch and much, much, much bigger. So everyone's thinking probably right now, well, why would I get the six and a half when I can get the eight for just like 200 bucks more? $270. It's worth it. Isn't it worth it, Zios? Zios. The wallpapers tend to mean something when I pick them. And this one with the um, rocket launcher. Uh, did I mute this? Ah! I'm due. I don't know. Very loud. Uh, <laughs> very loud. <laughs> oh, I forgot you can't lower it. All right, so here's the thing. Swan makes the best speakers, period. That's like, there's like an average speaker. They're the best. These little guys, the D10A Mark II is like, man, the ones, but the M300, M300 Mark II, the M M3As I've got, just DSP corrected and amazing. I'll, I'll pull this one off so you could look at it. I'm not pulling it off, but it really doesn't need that cover because the, the, the ribbon, it's not even a ribbon, it's a flat panel tweeter, and then a little two inch mid-range, like actual just cone mid-range, it's the exact same thing here that's on the M300 Mark II. The exact same thing. And by the way, I love the way they look with the covers on, which is why I usually leave the covers on. One of the few speakers looks better with the covers on, but I'll take them off for the rest of the review because I'm gonna be pointing and yelling a lot. So that's an eight inch. And that's the same setup they had on the little six and a half, on the little, on the little. Those things are still fucking huge. And it's all self-powered. In case you've never been here, you don't know what I'm talking about. You have no idea what the history of these speakers are. These are a self-powered set of DSP corrected three-way speakers. And they're relatively advanced. They have digital inputs, which I highly recommend using since this is all DSP corrected to be output. And since they're using a giant uh, six pin lead to go from this side to that side. That means that they are definitely amplifying each individual driver separately. So there's an amplifier for this, an amplifier for this, an amplifier for that, then another amplifier for that and that and that. So there's six amplifiers in this host unit. You've got your volume knob or input select. You've got bass and treble, which I have cranked because just like the M300s, the, Mar the M300 Mark IIs, they sound acceptable, but a little bit flat when you listen to them with them just, well, flat. I love the it's fine. I love this scene. Let's put on shuffle because I actually had shuffle turned off. Boom. Next track. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, no terror. So you have them like flat and flat and everything's fine. You think I'll adjust the bass and I'll adjust the treble in case you didn't see that review. When I reviewed those, I was breaking them in and I just turned the bass and treble up so they would move the drivers more while they were breaking in so it'd break in faster. You know, just get, get everything moving. And I noticed that turning the treble up and turning the bass up, the bass got more bassy, but not like bass boost. It's like it unlocked the bass and then the treble didn't get more trebly it's like it unlocked the detail. 
It's as if it wasn't just adjusting like the the gain of a, the treble or mid range. It was like changing the way it worked. So the same happens on this. And I've tried every combination of maybe slightly less than full, full just full, full fuck, fuck it up, full, fully fuck it up, and then stand in front of it and go. Hey, um. Why does muting it and then hitting volume down unmute things? That is not the way things should work. By the way, remote control, uh, aluminum, gold buttons, because gold. Volume down here, optical coaxial, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, auxiliary, balance, power, and mute. There is a Wi-Fi setup, so you can actually have this act as a source on your network. So any smart devices can actually just send to it. Instead of Bluetooth, you could just say, oh, I, I, there's one or two applications I had on my phone that would actually work, but I just, no. There's also a coaxial, I'm sorry, not a coaxial, a, that's, that's sonnet ring stuff. There is a RGB, wow. What am I thinking of? Cat6, thank you. No, wait, RJ45, I, mm, I knew it. It's an RJ45 connector on the back for wire, for WLAN. Which I don't know what I call it, WLAN. Wouldn't that be wireless LAN or worldwide LAN? I don't know. So you got two digital inputs, coaxial and optical. We're feeding this currently coaxial, coming from the laptop out of the song cause into this. Uh, you got analog uh, RCA inputs. I have two balanced inputs, which are coming all the way over here from the IFI uh, Zen Phono, which is being fed from the new rack that has you know, black pumas on it this is a very good album by the by the way so i was listening to vinyl through oh, shit it's it's here and we're gonna do it aren't we please don't forgive me princess pasta okay i'll do this just once i did this for me it was, it was my birthday gift to myself was new vinyl and please stay up First, let's make sure we're on lower. Then we're gonna switch it to balanced, which is that. Then we'll drop this down, and then we'll get a copyright strike, and the channel will be ruined. All right, that's all we can play. That's literally it. I don't trust playing any more than that, but I hope you enjoyed that little vinyl excursion we went on. I had fun. I, it felt super vintage. I love the popping and the cracking. I love the fact that the IFI um, Phono can do balance, because balance you can put through XLR cables, and XLR cables can be very long, and everything sounds great. Now, back to speakers and back to coaxial. Unmute. Coaxial. Back to this. All right, all right. Can we just get to the problem? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. These speakers are too loud. And Zeos, Zeos, you have remote control. Just lower them. Okay. You can lower the volume on a speaker. Just like you can drive a top fuel dragster at pit speeds, all right? You're just sitting there, and you just, you know, your clutch is like, uh, and you roll for, uh, and you roll forward, and, and it idle forward. That's exactly the, the best realization is that you can lower the volume on these and play them at a whisper. But number one, the, the jump in volume, because this will blink when you, when you press the volume. So it blinks, one, there's nothing playing, two, Something's playing. I could definitely hear Power Man 5000. I think. Three, okay. Definitely music. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you're gonna die. In a room, in a, in a normal room. This is a 53 by 55 foot basement. And I can kill any human being in this basement with these speakers. Just turn them a little bit. Because there's, I've blinked it nine times. 
Now we're at like as loud as most people ever play these speakers in their life, but they go to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Then it blinks red to say you're at full. 40. We are, we were at 24% of where they are currently. And the music is paused. I have no idea what happens if I unpause it. And I'm not going to do it for the views because fuck you, I need my ears. So let's lower that back down and hold it down until it hits zero. And let's contemplate how loud these things can get. They can get rocket launcher loud. They can get concert level loud, but not in a pleasurable way. Like I've dealt with big speakers before. These clips, RF7s, boom, look at them. $3,600 for the pair. You put them in a room like this, right here in a little space. You turn up, you go, yeah. The problem with the swans is, you put these up to yeah levels and all of a sudden it's like, wow, there's still 70% headroom. How high can we go? And then you just start walking away. And I'm not joking. I started this review where I like listening to these speakers because if I, unpa if I unpause this, oh God, where am I? Very low. Okay, good. This is about as loud as I'd ever play speakers in this area. One, two, three, four, five more clicks of volume. Hopefully I could still unpause it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, there, there's no, I, you, you can't get far enough away for them to be comfortably loud. Because what they're doing is because they're using the exact same, uh, tweeter and mid-range as this, which this was a perfectly balanced speaker. Perfectly balanced speaker. Like the best speaker. This is the best speaker I have in the house, the Buchart. Better than this probably, maybe a little inkling, but if this one breaks, it's 900 and that one's 4,500. So which one do you think I wanna say is the better speaker? These speakers, I'm not giving these a bad review right now. And I know it sounds like I'm giving them a bad review right now, but I'm not. These speakers are not designed for homes. These speakers are designed for warehouses. My upstairs, my fucking giant great room, if I put these up there and turned them up to a, to like anywhere near what I think they're capable of, you wouldn't be able to speak. Swan has, has gone too far with this speaker. I was expecting it to have a little more low end you know, bring up, bring it, you know, further down. Maybe not make it, maybe a little bit louder, but never really needed to be louder. And um, what they did instead was give it a little more low end and double the headroom of volume that the speaker's capable of. I, I, I think what I'm going to tell you to do is to not buy these speakers. Don't buy these speakers. They're fantastic. Wait till you hear the sound demo. I did the sound demo before I did this because I had them here and I'm not moving them off there until it's all done. Um, and I'll tell you where they're moving, by the way, because they're not gonna get boxed up and sent back or boxed up and put in a closet. These will be a very, very active speaker in my life. Don't bother the pun because it's an active speaker, you get it? These speakers have a purpose and I don't know what it is. Because like the M, Three A's, the big ones that I got, that I spent the twelve hundred dollars on, which is, by the way, slightly more than these cost. Um, don't sound as good as this. They don't sound as good as this, but they're usable. You you put them up, and it's like, oh yeah, it's it's, it's perfectly balanced, and it never feels like you want to die in front of them. It's very hard for me to describe this because they don't necessarily hurt, but the jumps in volume are so big as you're changing that when you go from like four steps up to eight steps up, which is only one, two, three, four, you've gone past the limit usually. And then you go down to seven and it's like, that's too low. I want to go higher. And it's one of the biggest problems I have with this is literally just the volume potential. Uh, I'll argue the fact that when you use an analog input, like the, the turntable is doing, uh, I'm going to, I sh actually, that was going to be part of my video. I'll describe my video that I had planned in my head. I was going to do a video called DSP, the death of vinyl, 
or the death of analog, whichever one you want. Because I just sat here, we put on Black Pumas, was playing analog into an analog uh, preamp, which is sending an analog signal through XLRs. And that analog signal ends up at the back of this unit. And that amplifier, the amplifier itself is analog. But before the am amplifiers in any of these modern DSP corrected speakers is a digital signal processor. And guess what? Analog coming in has to be converted from analog to digital, fucked with, broken apart, twisted, made to work in all six of these drivers, and then the amplifiers get it. So if you're an analog freak, powered speakers like this are not what you want. You want old school tubes or old vintage amplifiers and big old dumb towers with capacitors and all sorts of coils in them and everything's, everything's analog. The problem is these types of speakers will shit on any of this. And I know what you're gonna say, see, it's just a very bold statement to say, for what I know about speakers and tuning it and getting the one driver to work with the other driver to work with the other driver and time alignment, you cannot beat a DS. A properly digital signal processed speaker will shit on whatever vintage tube, amp, class A, Klipsch tower, gone, garbage, all of it. The Buchard A500s taught me well because the Buchard S400s or the same speaker and the S400s, while being amazing, pale to the A500s. And these speakers and the, the little brothers, the S, the, yeah, the M300 Mark IIs will destroy your concept of what speakers can do, no matter how many amps, no matter how many fucking passive speakers you hook up, no matter how much you think you're correct in the room with foam, these will sound better. I got off on a tangent there, which is good because people love tangents, but my argument is that these speakers, these speakers, these speakers are staying in my house and getting used forever because these speakers are exactly the type of speaker I tell you whenever you're doing a home theater video, oh, what center channel should I get? Should I get the center channel that matches my left and right? Yeah, but I'm always like, maybe you should get a bigger center channel than your left and right. Because your left and right, they're like, if this is your left and right, if these Klipsch motherfucking RF7s or these JBL Studio 590s, these monster speakers that are like nipple high and weigh 100 pounds a piece. Actually, those weigh 100 pounds a piece. Those weigh like 60 pounds a piece, 50. I don't know. Those are lightweight compared to these. If these are your left and right, that means that boom, explosion, boom, explosion, dialogue. If, you're, if your center channel looks like this, little tiny baby thing. That's why I don't use the center channel from the JBLs usually with it because it's only four inch drivers. You can't compete with, the, with, with you, how the hell is that thing supposed to keep up with everything happening on screen? So what you're looking at here are, these are my center channel, both of these, the pair. Well, uh, when we when I redo my uh, system over here, and I build the, I'm building the new screen 150 inch, which is probably gonna be more like 151 actually. So that's coming out, and I'm using clip heresies here. These fucking monsters, the great speakers. They need low end, and they need the tweet, the horns like pushed back. So all DSP corrected, everything is coherent and nice. Problem is, I'm putting a screen so big that it would it would actually encompass them. So I'm probably gonna need to get a center channel to sort of balance it out. Because if you're sitting here, you know, you can't just have the left speaker and right speaker fake a center like I've been doing for so long because the screen's so big. And what center channel do you get, Zeus? Do, 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 you, do you get a clipsh? Do you pull out that triangle? Are you gonna go to JBL? No, no. Because of the way my shit is set up, these are gonna be my center channel. Both of them on stands or even a small table behind that 150 inch screen, maybe this far apart, DSP corrected to match the room. These are the only speaker I feel will do justice to a behind the screen center channel in ZS's life. Because that murderous volume potential is exactly what I want. I want... Oh, it's muted. It's so much 
Ooh, it's a jazz sampler. If I mute that and I go through this, hold on. Can I get something that everybody knows or that has singing in it? Turin breaks. All right, I'll put on Raiden City. So now imagine this is vocals for a movie and you're just sitting there and these are behind a screen, you don't know they're there. Oh my God. Help me now. Oh, me now. Like they are, that's very loud and very perfect. Now let's put two pieces of spandex in front of it and let me sit. When I move those seats back and then 150 inches there, I'm gonna be about this far away. And they're gonna be the best center channel that's ever fucking been. Now this is probably not helping you because you have no idea how to make these a center channel. I mean, it's doable. Anybody can buy a pair of powered monitors as long as your receiver, your re surround receiver, which this is not the one you should be looking at, that's a vintage, has a pre-out, little one, one RCA, one RCA out. It says, hey, I'm your center channel. You run an RCA to a splitter, you go left and right in, and then all of a sudden, these are your center channel. It would suffer from that reconversion from analog back to digital and back to analog for you know being a speaker, but I don't have to suffer from that because my system is insane and has nothing but digital signals to every channel. So I'm just gonna run coaxial digital to these behind the screen and say, you're a center channel now, and they're gonna be like, okay. And then I'm gonna Dirac correct them through the screen material so I know I got the exact correct fucking phase. All right, here's the thing. Swan sent me these speakers, right? And they sent me all these speakers. They sent me like five, three pairs that I have to review. These are getting a, please consider getting the smaller ones. Get the M300 Mark IIs. They lowered the price on these. These were like 13 or four, these were $1,400. Now they're 1169, all right? They, they may have screwed up a bit. They may have overestimated how much volume potential people need in a speaker. They're, they're one of the, they sound like they could be one of the best speakers ever. I don't have the room or the ears for it. And I've got a 3,000 square foot basement. I don't have the room. The only thing I could do is put them behind a screen and integrate them into a system where all they need to do all day is shout. That's all they're gonna do. They're gonna shout the best than any speaker has ever shouted, but that's their job is to just yell. Jesus Christ, it hurts. It, it, it's... I'm gonna lower it, I'm gonna lower it to like a listen bowl. Keep lowering it, keep lowering it. I think another thing that happened, and I was trying to get into this when I was over there, is because they didn't increase the size of this, they just increased the size of this from that, these had to be turned up a bit, like to match this, because this is gonna do its normal happy thing. And they're like, well, you need to do more and you need to do more. And I can tell they're doing more, but it th might be out of their comfort zone a bit. Like perfect cohesive balance, M300 Mark IIs. Insane, holy shit, rocket launcher, M500s. Now, I'm hoping they send me the M5A which is like a different series, which matches the M3As that I bought, only with an eight inch. And I think that might, those speakers, the M3As I got, felt like the audiophile, sit down, pour some scotch, twirl it in my glass, that sort of listening speaker. And these are not that. You do not swirl scotch. You fucking climb things and you're on ecstasy and you're like, ah, my brain's on fire. That's what these speakers are. And, I'm hoping that the M5As go the exact opposite route. Then again, the M5As I wouldn't put behind my screen in my home theater. So when Jurassic Park happens and the T-Rex screams, I, I, w I should have taken the T-Rex scream and recorded it in Audacity and then put it here so I could be like, next track. Oh my God, could I? You know, I didn't even talk about the low end. Fuck. You don't even need to know. You'll never know. You'll never know the potential because the six and a half inch 300 uh, shook this basement and these, they pummel you. They pummel you. And it doesn't sound like it's like, oh, they got the bass turned up. It's just clean and clear. It's so much, it's so much excursion down 
Extension, not excursion, extension. Extursion is this. Extension is like, how low can you go? <sighs> this is Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd ain't exactly known for its low end. Berserk, tell me why. God, it's sad. Lo Yan, it's just, it, it's just, there's so much going on and I love him, but at the same time, I'm like, please don't. These are fun for Zeus, all right? Zeus gets these things in the mail. He didn't have to work hard for them. He didn't have to pay for them. They just show up and I get to laugh and go, ha, 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 ha. You, you buying it, you throwing $1,100 into the fucking void, you have to understand what I'm telling you. These are too much speaker for you, and not in that like, ha ha, I dare you to get them because they're too much speaker for you. These are probably too much speaker for you. Like, I would, if someone came to me right now, this moment, and said, oh, my fucking daughter is in high school, and they're doing the graduation in the, in the gymnasium, and the PA system broke, I'd have two choices. I'd either give them the uh, $1,000 Bluetooth speaker upstairs, the sound box, and say, here you go plug a mic into this or I'd bring these and just put them right in front of the stage and these would absolutely fill a double fucking basketball court gymnasium to do PA announcements they're so fucking insanely loud and the, again you don't have to run them loud but the volume steps are so fucking giant that you can never quite get it right and they just sound overwhelming all the time Get the six inch version, get the fucking, get the M300s. Go watch my review of that. Cause none of this like cautionary tale happens in that review. This is all cautionary tale from the start to the fucking middle to the end is like, these speakers are amazing. They do amazing things, they have amazing features. Don't buy them, buy the smaller ones. If you buy these speakers after hearing my voice, please come back and leave a comment. I'll check or join my patient and subscribe star. Message me there. Although no wait, don't message me there. I don't answer messages on there. If you want to actually speak to me, the $10 Patreon chat or Telegram chat is really the only place to guarantee to get through to me. It was too much effort to go through every single question sent by everybody. It was just, it was, it was, it was nauseating. Oh no, this is going to be loud. I just realized I never did the thing I said I was going to do in the sound demo. I can't play anything else. It's just, it's so loud. The, the GoPro's picking it up perfectly and it's just being shoved to the YouTube algorithm and going, oh, bl back this video. Block it. Block it. God, Peter Frant. It sounds lo louder than live music. Like live music at a stage, like with the amplifiers there. This sounds louder than that. And if, if that's what you're into, if, you want to, if you're running a college house and you're like, man, we want to throw some parties, fucking buy them. They'll be the best party speakers that have ever been there, but you're doing them a disservice and you're doing your ears a disservice. <sighs> I hate giving something like this such a mediocre review, especially when I know I've been looking forward to them and I know once I shove them behind the screen and use them strictly for everything center channel, they're gonna be perfect. They're gonna be better than perfect. It's just that I know you're not gonna, you, you people are thinking about, oh, I have a living room. Keep in mind also, these things weigh like 45 pounds each. These, these, well, this one's actually lighter. Oh my God. This one doesn't have an amplifier in it. But that one, that one's a break your back. These are no joke. And if you treat them like a joke, you're gonna get hurt. Anyway, I'm done. I have to stop. The sound demo I just recorded should be on the secondary side sound demo channel. If you don't know, a lot of sound demos got yanked off of the YouTubes because lawyers and whatever. So if you want to access all my old sound demos, at least the audio from them, that's available to $5 patrons. So $5 patrons now have access to the whatever happens to sound demos. I may completely move them off of YouTube because fuck you, YouTube, fuck. Um, see reviews early like this in case there's a rush on, which actually if the price stays low, that price might jump back up to $1,400. So if you're a patron and you see this review early and I somehow convinced you that this is exactly what you wanted, you can buy a set um, and participate in the yard sales, which uh, under normal circumstances, under not having 
the home theater being redone, I would have put these in the yard sale. I would have been like, holy shit, these are too much. Someone will pay me 600 bucks for them and I'll ship it to them. Um, free shipping content in the United States, half shipping international. But I'm going to try them out behind my home theater screen and see if they work. They should work. Everything should work great. It's, I've never had a bad problem before ever. It's going to be fantastic. Um, I'm just going to keep hitting the next track. Fucking Mozart sounds oppressive. Like, it's great. It's clear. It's clean. It's just a lot. I do that some, sometimes. It's just like, mm, it's a lot. And it's just, you sit here and you go, um, and I've had people over and they're like, like shit. And they just want to walk away. Like, you have to walk away. They're like the best sounding, like, you know, when you go to a concert or something and you're, the, you're right next to the speaker and you're like, oh God, this is that. But the best sounding speakers you've ever heard doing that. Oh no. Oh no. -na 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 -na. No, I can't. I, no, no, this review's ending right now. Right now. Right now. No Brian Adams. M500's linked in the description. Right below that. M300 Mark II's linked in the description. You want those. You want those. Those are perfect. Those are perfect speakers. They're the perfect size. They're the perfect amount of low end. They're the perfect price and a perfect sound. And you have not, nothing to worry about. These are, if you, for, for, I, I don't know who they're for. I'm going to try them in a way and see if I can get them to work. But other than that, I have no idea who these will work for. The end. Um, sound demos down there. Um, that's, I don't know. That's it. Wallpaper. I don't know what show this is from. This is definitely a screenshot from a show, and I fucking need to see it because these girls are trying to fire a rocket launcher. The sound demo has a nice tiger tank background. I know that because I did it already, and uh, you can find that link in the description. And again, Patreon subscribe star because I'm fuck because I'm fuck. That's why. Uh, yeah, and if you want to contact me, ten dollars a month gets in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where I'll answer any of your questions. And so everybody else in there. And there's a swap meet in there, so that if you want to sell something, like your giant speakers that you bought, which you thought I was lying to you about how insane they are, um, you can put them on the swap meet. And you and all the other people who have ever been to the swap meet get in there for life. So yeah, and uh, don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guide forums. I feel like I want to keep going with this review. Like, I feel like I haven't talked enough about them. But I need to stop, because I need to take them off of here and get them ready for over there, which is where they'll live their life. A brutal painstaking life of nothing but screaming dinosaurs and oh my god gunshots and will smith going oh yeah 